What's up, Eagles fans, and welcome inside the film room presented by Lincoln Financial Group. I'm Fran Duffy, and pleased to be joined here by head coach Nick Sirianni to break down some film. Coach, thanks for joining us here inside the film room. Thanks for having me, Fran. All right, well, let's get into this because I want to break down some film over the last three years of this Colts offense and all the different things that you guys have done to kind of make things simple for the quarterback, create big plays in the passing game. And we'll start with one of the concepts that, you know, going back and studying you guys, this has been one of your core philosophies. I've always kind of called it dag. Uh, when, when breaking down film in the past. Take us through what this concept looks like and uh, some of the different ways that the quarterback can attack the defense. I'm not going to give the name away. Sure. All right, so we'll call it Dagger. I like that. I like that <laughs> name. Um, but basically what we're doing here, our offense is based on being able to create explosive plays. We know that when you can win the explosive play battle and you can win the turnover battle, that leads to a lot of success. And that's both offensively and defensively, right? Create explosive plays on offense, take them away on defense. Protect the ball on offense, take it away on defense. So what you're gonna see right here is what we're trying to do is create an explosive play. And as you can see right here, we're chipping the end right here. Jadavion Clowney over here on the left is a good pass rusher as we all know. And we're just trying to get hands on him so we can push the ball down the field. All right, and so that's uh, Eric Ebron's job right there is to get a thump on him, to give Andrew Luck a little bit of time here to run this play. The job of the number two receiver right there, right, is to clear out of there. So he's a little bit behind right now. So he's got to go because he's got to pull this coverage out of there. He gets to where he needs to go, but that's not the most appeasing to the eye to Andrew Luck right there. But he trusts Chester Rogers to clear this thing out so he can rip this in route to Ryan Grant right there to create the explosive play. Again, it's a concept that's that's that a lot of teams in the NFL use. All right, we like to use it with all types of quarterbacks that we have, right? Unfortunately, fortunately, however you want to look at it, we had three different quarterbacks in Indianapolis while I was there. Andrew Luck, Jacoby Brissett, Phillip Rivers, all great players in their own right, all like to do things a little bit differently though, right? And our job as coaches is to adapt to the players that we have and run the plays that they like. But we also have a system. Right, we have a system. So yes, we wanna do what our players like to do and wanna do, and then also we have a system of plays that we're gonna be good at, that they like. So every one of these quarterbacks looks a little different, but there's some similarities in there as well. Coach, when you're looking at it from a from a coverage standpoint with this concept, going against a too high look, I guess that number two receiver, like you said, their main goal is trying to stretch that defense, get that Mike linebacker out of the picture, right? Just clear up this middle of the field for the deep in cut. No question, and that's a good point, uh, Fran. We're trying to pull Cunningham out of there, number 41, and this deep safety back there. I can't see who that is. It might be Reed, 20. But we're trying to pull both of those guys out of there, knowing that the corner is not a chaser in cover two, all right, and then wrap that thing in there behind their nickel defensive back. All right, so we're gonna take a look now at another play, different quarterback, same concept. So take us through what we're seeing here, this time going up against the Raiders. Sure, yeah. So similar concept, right? It's just that now we're out of two by two. And you can see right here, we have T.Y. Hilton in a stack with Marcus Johnson. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and now T.Y. is that clear. All right, Chester Rogers was the clear in the last one. Now T.Y. is that guy. We knew that 24 here, Abrams is a deep safety. All right, he liked to be a little bit aggressive on these things. So we had a chance to peek this thing through the middle. All right, but you can see this, right? Right, we had the same concept last time. Again, a little different on the backside to pin down this backside safety so we can truly be one-on-one -on -one here with T.Y. Hilton, all right, and Abrams. Here we go, we're running through here on this. You can see T.Y. gets the speed through the middle, but you can also see that if Abrams stayed deep here, that we could rip this in, just like that last play we saw Andrew Luck rip on that end as well. The difference here, just take a look at the, the little difference here, is now instead of the tight end protecting the edge, you can see it's a little play action fake right here, all right, to Jonathan Taylor. He's gonna be the one secures the edge right here and then rip off to the flat. So guys are getting to similar spots. Quarterback's reading a similar thing. Phillip just chucks it deep for a touchdown. Coach, what I love here about this one, you know, that last one we saw was against the traditional kind of Tampa 2 look. This one, more of a quarters look. And as you mentioned, with quarters, you have to kind of accommodate this other safety. You got to keep his eyes away from this deep over from TY. So explain exactly how you're trying to do that with that backside tight end. Yeah, you're sharp here, Fran. <laughs> All right, so what we're, what we're trying to do right here with Jack Doyle is gather the eyes of 25 on the backside. All right, so 25 has picked us off a couple times these last couple years. So we were like, that's not happening again to us. 
go pin his eyes. Doyle right here, right? His job was to go and attract 25. There was no chance that Jack Doyle, that's what's so awesome about football, right? Like Jack Doyle is this awesome teammate that his job was to get his friend T.Y. Hilton open on this play. And nobody's gonna celebrate more. T.Y. is gonna be pretty juiced that he's on Sports Center, that his name's in the paper, whatever, all those things that the band's playing for him. But Jack Doyle made this play go a lot because he went up there, he stared down 25, all right? He stared him down, put his foot in the ground and got him running to the sideline where it could truly create a one-on-one -on -one rep with T.Y. and Abrams. And then coach, real quickly, before we move to the next one, talk about the route from T.Y. as well, because he looks like he holds that vertically before breaking across the field, right? How does that affect that safety Abrams deep? Everything we talk about, Fran, is to run a sharp, crisp route. Like, I don't like banana routes, right? I don't like the, uh, we're gonna roll into it. It's stick your foot in the ground and rip it, right? Because if we can get ourselves going vertically, like T.Y. is doing right here, stick our right foot in the ground hard. We always say it's your foot, it's your body, it's your head sticking hard to the right here to move Abram to the right, right? Abram's a great football player. So we gotta move him a little bit, create some deception to him that we're breaking to the corner there to get his body off target. So now we can have a foot race there because we knew that T.Y. was a fast football player. The entire NFL knows that about him. All right, so we've seen one play here with Andrew Luck back in 2018. We've seen one last year, 2020, with Phillip Rivers. Let's take a look at another one here, 2019, this time with Jacoby Brissett. Similar kind of concept here. Take us with what we're seeing here with Houston. Very similar kind of concept, but really all these plays are called something a little bit different, right? They're similar in their own ways, but they're all called a little bit different. They're all meant for a couple different coverages. So now you can see like the guy that's getting to the underneath part of this area is T.Y. from the other side of the field. He's the X down here at the bottom. So the first one, Ebron was in the flat. The second one, Taylor was in the flat. This one, T.Y. is under here in the flat, coming over here to the flat. So we see this play, we're rolling on this. You can see guys are getting to similar spots. Houston did a good job. They're in a similar coverage that they were in 2018 when they played. But this nickel right here just got a little bit more depth. Right, so they played this better. You know, Romeo Cornell is a phenomenal defensive coordinator. He saw it on tape, played it a little bit better. What Jacoby had, which was a little bit unlike Phillip, is he had the ability to escape, right? He had the ability to escape right here, so you can see him step up in the pocket. He can see things kind of broke down on him. Like, great job, Houston, you covered us. This was a great job by them. They covered us, they played us twice a year. They should cover us here and there because they get paid to watch tape as well. So Jacoby steps up. He rips it back through here, and they leave that void right there for us all right, off of a scramble. So just a little different something right there because of the things and the skills that Jacoby Brissett brings to the table. Again, very similar concepts, three different places where the ball went. I think that's what's pretty cool about this game. Like, it's just, you know, we're trying to keep it simple for the players all right, and let them do the things that they do best. So coach, I've got, I've got two follow-ups here for you without giving away uh, the secret sauce. The one thing that we see in this one that we didn't get in the others two was this little kind of return motion from Ebron from the tight end. So if you could just tell us what goes into that motion and the whys behind that. And then the second part, what is it like as a coaching staff going into the week? You know, you build off these core concepts, these core philosophies, but always trying to build in different kinds of answers for the quarterback. So when Jacoby steps up, the play breaks down, having that different answer with the tight end streaking across the field. How fun is that process? from a collaboration standpoint. Right now we're in a bunch and they're three over three on the bunch, okay? So what we're trying to do right here is Eric Ebron's playing tight end and we're just trying to push him out there to see who goes out there. Okay, 32, all right, dude from Kentucky, you went out there, all right, then we know it's zone. Eric Reed, you go out there, then we would think it's man. So they're kind of confused right now a little bit. Their confusion puts a little bit of confusion into Jacoby, right? So we're trying to do a couple things there. We're trying to get off coverage and make them communicate a little bit while we see what the coverage is to the defense to help Eric Ebron get open right here. So that's what we're trying to do with that motion. You know, coming up with plays and how we attack the defense. I mean, it's addicting, right? It's addicting. What? Uh, it's just a, it's like a rush. You're in a film room with offensive coaches and you're talking through the plan and you're talking through how you're gonna attack a defense and you're like, move, this will be good. Is this gonna be good against this look? Is this gonna be good against this look? And you draw it up and you think about it and you get excited. It's just an exciting process and it never gets old. And then when it works in a game or when you're in a game and you're like, oh man, here, there, here it comes, they're gonna play cover two to that. 
here we go, that's what we thought, here it is. You know, we try to keep the, the talking to a minimum on the headset because the, the coordinator and myself, we need to be able to talk and talk through everything. But it's, sometimes it's hard to hide that excitement. Like, oh my goodness, we got cover two, we're gonna rip this in. Or, oh my goodness, we got cover one, we're gonna rip this Dover. Feel, oh my gosh, it's cover four, we're gonna get TY on the safety over there, boom we hit a touchdown and that's pretty awesome. You know, I, I kind of compare it to like a lot of our coaches, we, we played football in the past and we can't score touchdowns anymore, right? We can't, we can't throw touchdowns anymore. We can't tackle the defender, the ball carrier anymore or get an interception. But this is our way to do that. It's, it's just as exciting. In fact, I think it's even more exciting because we're serving our players and helping our players accomplish the things that we once accomplished in our life, lifetime. Just me, I was at Mount Union. I was at a much lower level than what we are right now. So coach, you, you just said something there at the end that really kind of brings me into the next part of this breakdown where uh, you talk about creating opportunities for your players, serving your players, watching all of your teams, you know, going back last three years uh, with the Colts, going back uh, to your time in San Diego with the Chargers. Every single one of these offenses create yards after catch for these guys. Get these guys in the, on the move, open field. So I just want, first of all, where does that philosophy come from for you? Because not every coach kind of operates that way. And then the second part, what are some of the different things that you do to create those chances for your players? Again, it, it is still all about creating explosive plays. Explosive plays don't have to be created by throwing the ball 50 yards downfield. They can be created by getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands right now. And that's where we've had a lot of success. One thing we pride ourselves on is to be able to get the ball out of our hands at the quarterback position to a playmaker with the ball in their hands, quick, right? So this one right here is, we're trying to push this ball downfield, as you can see, right? We got a route on, a very similar route with the deep cross. It's just people are getting there different ways, okay? We're trying to push this ball down the field with the play action. They do a good job of covering it. You can see Minka Fitzpatrick driving the crosser by Paris Campbell right here. But what we do right here is we get the ball to a guy with the ball in his hands off the check down because everybody sunk out of there. Right? It's take what the defense gives us. The defense wants to give us an underneath, we'll take it. I liked this clip that you picked right here because not every guy yards after catch looks the same. Mo Ali Cox looks different than Michael Pittman, looks different than T.Y. Hilton, right? So look at how he creates this. He creates this with power, right? He creates the yards after catch with power, right? Sink out of there. You can look at the emotion on the sideline. I love that. Let's Jason Michael, our tight, go back, go back. <laughs> Look, that's Jason Michael, our tight end coach, because he's a tight end coach here. Look at, look at the teammates. Look how much love they have for each other. That's Jack Doyle. Look how excited, that's Eric Ebron. Look how excited that tight end room is that Mo Ali Cox just got a little touch right there and bowled over the Steelers defense. Look at the energy it brings to the entire sideline. And one of those guys is me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm excited, all right? I'm just not as excited as those tight ends. Like, gosh, I gotta get myself that excited. That was awesome. Hopefully you can feel how excited I am right now. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Now we're getting a longer, fast guy the ball. People are blowing out of this other side, right? You can see T.Y. Hilton and Zach Paschal blowing out this coverage. They're running a three dog pressure. We get the safety out of there. They're bringing the nickel. We're gonna pick this up. The nickel gets out of there, or pardon me, the safety gets out of there. T.Y. blows the corner out of there. And they got one guy to cover two now, right? So Allie Cox is coming across. Michael Pittman's coming across. All right now, this is tough for you. This is tough for you, linebacker. I think number 58, you got to cover two. Who are you going to pick? All right, so he drops back out of there. The ball's out of Phillip Rivers' hand quick, and we turn that thing into a long play. What can't be unnoticed here is the ball placement by the quarterback. The ball placement by the quarterback, does Michael Pittman have to break stride? Does he have to break stride? I would say no. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bump, shoot, bump, I was bump. asking you the question, Frank. That's right. Come on, oh, faster. Well, it's right. exact, exactly he doesn't have to break be. stride. So now we tell Michael Pittman that his job is to come across with speed, right, but build at an angle. If you play this thing right here, and Pittman's building at an angle, right, and he's gradually building like he is right there, number 58 can't make this football play. Right? If Michael Pittman's flat, if he's parallel, running parallel to the line of scrimmage, now you're gonna give a lesser athlete a chance to make this play. So great fundamentals and technique by Michael Pittman on the, what we call route discipline, right? When the route discipline's good, we call the play against the right coverage and the quarterback puts an accurate ball on the money, all right, that's what happens. Look at this too, come back. Look at the carrying for the teammates. 
right? The connecting of the teammates together, that's when you get special plays like this, where they're fighting for each other, and they're just as excited as he is that he scored. Just like that Jack Doyle clip. That's what I was just gonna say. It goes back to that Jack Doyle clip. You know, he's setting up TY. Well, now it's TY's turn to set it up for somebody else, and everybody knows, hey, at some point, I'm gonna get mine. Come on back. I wanna see one more thing from the sideline. Right there. Okay, look at this. All these guys, this is right here in the top right. Can you see the Colts emblem? In the top right? Yep, yeah, sure. Okay. Those are all our practice squad guys right there. Because if COVID, they got the luxury box. Okay, they don't get that in a non-COVID year, all right? Because of COVID, they got a luxury box, and this that is so cool too, right? That's awesome. It's just such a team. It's just such a connecting thing together. He jumps in the stands. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should show this clip, and then you should show that picture of him jumping in the stands with all the guys on top of him. I mean, that's freaking awesome, all right? Because why? Michael made the play. Timo I made the block. Mo Ali Cox made the block. Phillip made a great throw. But those guys in the corner of the end zone helped them get ready for the practice all week long, which is so cool. So the other aspect in terms of yards after catch that I feel like a lot of people, a lot, a lot of fans will relate with is the screen game. And, you know, whether it's running back screens, wide receiver screens, tight end screens, I've seen it all from you guys over the years. Here we see a wide receiver screen break it through what we see here against Tennessee. Yeah. So now we're just trying to get the ball in our hands of a playmaker fast, right? So this is like a punt return now. All right, we're just trying to get the ball out of our hand quick. There's no read. There's no nothing. There's boom. So come back. Let's count how long it balls in Andrew Luck's hands. One, out. Right? Out. Out. Right? And then our offensive line does a great job. You can see Dontrell Inman. You can see Chester Rogers blocking for their guy, right? Blocking for their guy. You can see Braden Smith coming up here and getting to the second level. Mark Lewinsky, the offensive line. Andrew Luck. It was important that Andrew Luck threw a, a perfect ball right there. It was really important that he threw a perfect ball that right on the right shoulder of T.Y. Hill and to let him go and run, all right, and just fly right through there to create an explosive play. This was a play-in game. This was the last game of the 2018 season, the last game on a Sunday night, the play-in game. Whoever wins this game goes in there, and what our philosophy was coming in there is let's let our players go eat, let's let our players go make plays, all right, and get the ball in the guys like T.Y. Hill and Tan. But you can see right there, there's three different examples. Michael Pittman is a strong physical guy. T.Y. Hilton is a quick, fast guy. Mo Ali Cox is a big, powerful, strong person. Yards after catch looks a lot of different ways. But it's cool, though, to get the ball out of our hands and, and get it to our playmakers' hands and let them go. They make us look like good coaches when we can do that, right? Just here, take it. We didn't have to do much right there. And then they go and do all the work. So to kind of bring this all together, you know, we started this off with a trio of plays from the, over the years in Indianapolis where same concept, different parts of the field that was, that was attacked. Then we get to the yards after catch element. And one aspect uh, as well with you guys watching, a lot of three level stretch concepts where you've got, you know, multiple guys going through a zone. You've got routes going into wide open space. And I figured let's kind of close this up with the same kind of idea. And again, yards after catch incorporated into a lot of these plays as well. Take us through what we're seeing here on this first one. So now you're going to see our Dover concepts, right? Deep over. And that's been a staple in our offense. And really, that goes back to, you know, North Turner offense, uh, Phillip Rivers. I didn't work with North, but when we first got to San Diego, um, Phillip had done so much of this deep crossing concept. We were a new staff coming in there, and they had run so much of this deep Dover concept areas. We also had Mike McCoy, who was had just be, been with Peyton Manning, and also uh, Frank Reich, who had been with Peyton Manning as his quarterback coach in Indianapolis. It's just something that puts major pressure on the defense. As you can see right here, this is Jacoby right here, a concept that we're running with a play action pass to clear this thing out and to rip this Dover. So it didn't matter, like we were running this. It didn't matter if it was Jacoby, if it was Andrew, or if it was Phillip, we were running these plays in Indianapolis. And you can see there was different ways we got there, right? Marcus Johnson, a former Eagle, his job down here was to blow this thing out of there. Try to get the safety out of there. Try to get the corner out of there, all right? Our play action is trying to hold these linebackers, right? Suck them up on the play action, then get something in their face right now, which is what the running back's doing right here into the flat to hold this linebacker right here. And then you can see Zach's coming across to hit this thing over here in like the 16 to 18 yard area of where he catches this ball, right? If we can blow out this side and occupy it here and we put a good pass on the receiver, there's room for run after catch again. Now, the yards after catch on this one looks different 
right? Because the ball's in there a little bit longer, but still being able to run after a catch right there. And then coach, the, the use of motion as well. Looks like you have uh, Naheem Hines in the backfield, a little jet action beforehand. Talk about just the impact that has on the defense sure. as well. You know, that's a unique thing to the defense's eye, right? So, you know, we're running a play action pass, so we probably ran a run off of this play as well. Yep. And so that's a pretty unique thing to the defense's eye where they can see, oh, here comes the Casper motion. Watch out for this run right here. And then we run a play action pass off of it, right? So we got to do our jobs to make the defense Right, just like T.Y. stuck his right foot in the ground and created deception to Jonathan Abram, we got to create deception to the defense with making things look similar. All right, so let's take a look at a similar kind of Dover concept, different year, different defense. What do we see here on this one where it ends up going to the same route? So we're running a very similar play right here. You can see this is with play action. This is actually called the exact same thing as the last one, right? Guys are getting to the exact same spot. You got to post. You got, now it's Ebron in the flat because the back's faking the other way, Dover in on the back side. The last one was against zone. This one's against man, right? So it's really important that Chester Rogers right here runs a great route to separate himself from a good defensive back. All right, so you're seeing this right here. You know, this is such an important route. We run this all the time in one-on-ones against our defense to get different looks. Our job as coaches is to put the receiver in as many different situations as he possibly can get into, give Chester every different look, and then so that when Chester comes up here to run this route, he's seen every look, right? So he's got all the answers to the test, he's just got to identify what the question is, right? And so Chester does a great job right here, Andrew puts a great ball on him right there, but again, there's a pretty good runner's ball right there by Andrew, putting it on his front shoulder. All right, again, ball placement cannot be over, like that ball placement has got to be perfect on these plays to make them roll. Uh, and no, no banana route uh, here with this one either, Coach. It's a great visual too, because you can see him right on the hash, hold that vertically, and then you see that violent snap that you had talked about earlier with T.Y. No question. Right here, boom, again, it's that right foot gets stuck in the ground quick. Why? Because it's an indicator to the quarterback that Chester's breaking across and a separator from the defensive back. Indicate, separate, indicate, separate, indicate, separate to get yourself away from that defensive back. It serves two purposes. And no motion with that one. I mean, just in you know, kind of a, a broad sense before we get to the next play. Do different quarterbacks like motion more than others? And how do you kind of incorporate that into the offense? How do you kind of cater that to whoever the specific quarterback is? You, you know what, Fran, again, it's, it's, back to, it's back to everything looking the same. So if you run this back, it's just about making the plays look similar to the runs. Again, this is play action. So we've run a play with Ebron flexed right here. We're outside zone right here to Naheem Hines. We've run that play, right? We've run the play with Naheem with the Casper. Really, the motion's not about the quarterback. It's more about the deception to the defense. Gotcha. All right, well, let's take a look at one last one, one last over here. Uh, this time, this past season with Phillip Rivers against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You're going to see this is the exact same play. It's just that Mo Ali Cox was in a slightly different spot than Ebron was. And we're going to be in a drop back protection because we know, OK, we did play action it. All right, it's just a little bit different play action. But you can see right here, all right, it's the exact same thing. It's still Zach Pascal running out and clearing out right up top. It's just a different guy on the Dover route because he has changed. Chester Rogers changed to Paris Campbell. It's just T.Y. Hilton still down here on the end, and Mo Ali Cox just replaced right there. So it's just the same stuff, different quarterbacks, different players, similar play, right? But look at again, look at 15, look at Paris Campbell. There's no banana there. Here's what happens when you banana it. That guy gets in your hip. And that throw to the quarterback is a lot harder. So here's what I tell the receivers. If you make it easy for the quarterback to throw you the football, what's going to happen? Dude, he's going to keep coming back to you. Make it easy for him. Don't run those banana routes. Like, there's many different ways. And come on back here. I like what Paris does right here. Paris is an explosive playmaker with the ball in his hands, OK? But what he also understands is that ball security, right? We talked about it at the beginning of this. Explosive plays, win the explosive play battle, win the ball security battle. Watch Paris wrap this thing up when he gets around traffic. He knows it's probably a round over. He knows when to call it quits, and he's had ball security the whole time. He just puts that extra hand on the football, as you can see, what we call a class pan, right? Boom, great ball, great ball, boom. I'm protecting it. I'm around three guys, class pan. Protect that football. We're on the 48 in Jacksonville territory.
Well, Coach, we have covered a lot of ground here today. We've seen different concepts, core philosophies from you, why you get the ball into the receiver's hands quickly, moving guys around, some route uh, efficiency as well. Coach, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here inside the film room presented by Lincoln Financial Group. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Ram.